Welcome to DC Direct. I'm Lionel Donovan. Here in this show, we try to talk about some of the bigger stories, but we want to hear from you. So follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at TRT World. And use the hashtag DC Direct to let us know what you think and be a part of our conversation. In today's show, we're going to be talking about climate change. For years, activists have called on the U.S. government to make protecting the environment a higher priority in order to safeguard places like the Potomac River. Now, climate change is becoming too big of a topic to ignore. Institutions are calling on global leaders to address climate change before it's too late. But has that time already passed? To find out, let's hear from Andrea McGimsey to get a better idea on how big of an impact climate change has had on the world. Exactly how bad is the situation? Well, it's a very serious situation. I've talked to lots of sciences and scientists, and they're worried about what's going on with our planet and for the future of you and me on this planet. Nearly every indicator used by scientists and experts shows that our climate is changing. Temperatures are rising, and snow and rainfall patterns are shifting. And if you've noticed an increase of stories of extreme weather in the news, you're right. Many of these extreme weather events are being linked to rising levels of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases due to human activity. Lots of results that the scientists have predicted, uh, more extreme weather, the incredible flooding we've been having, droughts, these are all predicted outcomes of putting so much greenhouse gases from the burning of fossil fuels up into the atmosphere. Other impacts would be sea level rise. A new report just came out uh, that we could see as much as two meters, which is over six feet of sea level rise by 2100. And that means in between now and the end of the century, the sea is gonna be rising more and more and threatening all of our coastal and tidal areas. And it's this information that inspired Stephen Leeds to get involved in climate activism and to explain why it's so urgent for others to get involved. This is something that that scientists have known about since the 70s. So why should this generation care about climate change so much? Like, why should we be worried about this now? In the 70s, Exxon and these gas companies could do these studies where they find out climate change is real, it's caused by fossil fuel consumption. They could do those studies and say, I don't care. That's um, an abstract future generation is going to deal with the effects of that. And, you know, hopefully something will change. Hopefully something will make it so it's not so bad. They had the luxury to say that in the 1970s. They had less of a luxury in the 80s. That's when the environmental movement started really kind of like ramping up a little bit more. In the 90s, there's no excuse. In the 2000s, we're out of excuses. It's the 2010s, and that generation that has to deal with climate change is no longer an abstraction. Climate change is an important issue to this generation, but is it also important to politicians and policymakers? In order to find out, let's talk to Tatiana Eves. This is the first election in a long time where climate change is a forefront issue. It's something that people feel like they have to address. It's supercharging people, I think, and it's showing us how we can address the climate. It's not this huge doomsday problem. It's something that we can actually tackle. That comes from taking people that produce the most and that make the most money and not just accepting this as the norm. So you think climate change is a big enough platform uh, for politicians to run on now? Yes, I definitely think it has to be one of their main platforms. You can't just talk about climate and you can't just talk about wealth equality or climate justice. They are all connected issues. Resolutions like the Green New Deal, for example, it promotes green jobs. So like training people that used to work in the coal industry to work on wind farms now or just like encouraging that type of growth in our economy, which will also produce jobs for 
a large amount of people that might lose jobs or that just aren't making enough currently. But despite the magnitude of the problems that come from climate change, hope still remains that the global ecosystem can be fixed before time runs out. Well, the good news is that we have the technology now and we know what we need to do. We just need the political will to do it. So for instance, we need to electrify our transportation system, our cars, you know, we burn gas in most of our cars and in our buses and trucks. We're making a lot of progress, but we're not there yet. Um, so there's still, you know, people have range anxiety because they're, you know, afraid they're gonna run out of their fuel and not be able to refuel. We need our governments to set policies and goals that incentivize that infrastructure because we don't have time for it to just kind of roll out just kind of, you know, at its own pace. We, might, we need to turbocharge it. We need to get it on the ground now. And for Stephen, dealing with climate change isn't something we can do, but something we must do. We are here. Generation Z is here. Uh, the children of millennials are coming into the world every year. Um, we are going to be alive during some of the, the worst effects of climate change. To not act now, in my opinion, is the most foolish and irresponsible collective action that we could take. Well, that's all the time we have today in DC Direct, but please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at TRT World. And use the hashtag DC Direct to let us know what you think about climate change. Is there still time to fix things or are we already too late? Until next time, I'm Lionel Donovan.